How are you spending your Friday nights? Toasting your own marshmallows? Fire pit need rekindling? Come on, join us every Friday night at the fire pit where our conversation really heats up. I'm Nancy Lee Andrews, and I wrote a Just of Rock and Roll, and you are watching Fire Pit Friday. Hi, Fire Pit Friday the podcast is here downtown Nashville, Tennessee, and it is a beautiful autumn day. And today we're bringing you some exciting news. The Fab Four Festival happens to be here in downtown Nashville. And I'm going to take you on an insider look behind the scenes of what's going on. Now the Fab Four Festival is something that happens every other year. And I've heard that they're going to try to bring it here every single year. But it's Beatle enthusiasts, Beatle memorabilia, Beatle mania. So me, I personally love the Beatles. I'm a Beatles maniac myself. So I couldn't, I just couldn't miss this chance to come down here in Nashville, Tennessee and figure out, hmm, what kind of other Beatle fanatics are out there? Now, everybody knows that Seth Sorsky was an interview that I did in Los Angeles, and I found out that he's also going to be here today. So hopefully, we're gonna mingle around. We're gonna see exactly who we can get an interview with find out some maybe personal testimony from them. All right, just to let you know, hmm, not only memorabilia, people, lots of very important people are going to be here. I mean, May Pang, Nancy Lee Andrews, Gary Burr, Buzz Carson, Marshall Crenshaw, Chet Flippo, Louise Harrison, Chris Huston, Neil Jeffries, Joe Johnson, Bill Lloyd, Joey Mollen, Catherine Mollen, Robert K. Orman, Ed Solomon, Seth Swirsky. I mean, I know that was a lot, but I'm going to try to pick this apart just for you podcasters because I love you, man. I do love you. So come on in. Let's go see who's mingling around the Fab Four Festival. Come on. Hi, Cindy, how are you? Good to see you. Uh, what are you looking at? The bait. Oh, look at this. You got your fire pit viewers I know, with you? I know, I know. Is this not the coolest? It is beyond the coolest. The memorabilia. And do you know how many people are going to be here at the panelists today? I actually remember this on the Ed Sullivan Show. You know what, Cynthia, I, I'm going to be interviewing a bunch of people today, and now that you're here, you know what I always do, recruit. You want me to help you? Could you help me? I sure will, Blondie. I'd be glad to. I'm excited because you know what? Someone I know from a long time ago is here, Mae Pang, and that's really why I came, to say hi to her. See, take a walk down memory lane. All right. Can I, can I walk down that with you? Because all you need is love. <laughs> Da, 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 da. I have no rhythm. Now is this is this your booth here? Are you no, are you? Booth. This is his I'm booth. I'm not having a booth. You're just a, you're just I'm here. A fan. Okay, well, tell playing tonight. So. Tell me about that. Who is he? He is Steve Allen, king of guitars. I married oh, this man. Uh huh. He is. Uh -huh. Really good. I saw how he was the turning his players. The long players. You ever seen the long players? Absolutely. They're doing Hendrix next, yeah, November third, right? I just met her. Right bum, 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 she's the best groupie ever. <laughs> I love this man. I do. Just 25 years 25 ago. But yes, we're going to play Abbey Road in its entirety, and it's such a fabulous record. And they've it's been just, working so oh, hard on it, you guys. Fantastic. Well, thank you. But we're going to do our best. We're going to see you tonight. Yes. All right. And they'll see me too because I can't sit still. All right. And when they take a break, I'll jump up on stage. Come on, guys. Let's get them out here. One more. One more. When they did the stunts, they show me your shirt. And everybody had those tongue shirts on, you know? Everybody's like, here's my shirt, you know? It's a blast. I'm not shy at all. So I, hey, you know what? Look at that tiny guitar, yeah. Cynthia. Do you think you could play it? I probably couldn't, but I would try. I you know, know you would normal. try. I know you would mm -hmm. <laughs> try anything. Anything. Try anything. Now, 
Hey, can I ask you a question, Mr. Mr. Merchandise Beetle, Mr. Merchandise Guy? Yes. Okay, your name is? Dennis. And you, you're here all the way from? Ontario, Canada. Okay, I knew that already. But <laughs> listen, what brings you here from Canada? I know that the Beatles, this is a big, this is a big deal yeah. for Nashville even to have a Beatles fest here. But do you travel all over with your Beatles merchandise? Oh, yeah, uh, throughout Canada and a few places in the States. And how do you feel about this, uh, this event here in Nashville? Well, it's a great event. Yeah. Well, that's that's a, a replica of the guitar that uh, George Harrison played in the movie. Yeah, take that off. In the movie uh, Magical Mystery Tour. And you know, I've got to play it like this. Well, I just want to know where can people go if they want to buy your merchandise? www.allbeetlestore.com. <laughs> The program is in syndication and has been since 19, uh, well, I, I think maybe 2001. The website was developed in 1999. And uh, in 2001, Westwood One picked it up. At that time, they were a CBS company. And, uh, and uh, Joe had uh, grown the uh, program in some... I think 15 markets. How so, did you, how do you come up with the name Joe Johnson's Beetle Brunch? Well, obviously the program is about the Beatles' uh, interviews and their music, and um, he figured that uh, by airing it uh, on Sunday morning, late Sunday morning, mm -hmm. it would be like brunch. a breakfast with the Beatles, but more. It's kind of like Leonard brunch. Of course, right now, just to let you know, we're talking here with the VIP of marketing. For the marketing guru. For the marketing guru for the Beatles Brunch, which is Joe Johnson's Beatle Brunch. But we're talking to Donnie G. Not That's to be right, confused with Kenny G. Yeah, right. He or had the G first. I had Donnie the G first. Remember D. that. Right. When uh, Westwood One picked this up, uh, I brought it to 40 markets. And uh, they, it caused some attention. Uh, and a guy over here, Ed Solomon, who is one of the uh, you know, uh, VIPs uh, for this particular event, um, he helped Joe uh, get this thing uh, syndicated. And now it's about 110 markets across the United States and Canada. And uh, it's the longest running uh, Beatles program in syndication. And uh, it's, it's quite cool, too. Uh, quite a bit. As a matter of fact, there was so much uh, popularity with the website and a community of Beatles fans that we uh, developed mm -hmm. that just this past year we started uh, Joe Johnson's Beatle Brunch Club or Joe Johnson's BBC. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Oh, and, oh, look at the BBC. There you go. You got Double the accent. No, yeah, I love that. But it's this, cool. This, this Beatles thing, this is like a personal favorite well, of yours? It is. It's a personal favorite. It's like an avocation. It's my hobby. Um, I'm probably not going to retire on it. Uh, but yet, um, I like it uh, for the sheer fact that it keeps the Beatles' memory alive and uh, keeps uh, the fans coming back for more. And... Um, and yeah. people need to check it out. They need to go to www.brunchradio.com. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, okay. Dan. Okay, so we were just chatting with the VIP of marketing, and now we've got the man the here. Man. Come on. Of the Beatles brunch. This is a craze. This is a yummy craze. It is a delicious show. That's right. It's better if you have it while you're having. Listen while you're having something to eat. Donnie's very cool, and he was explaining a little bit about the the marketing and how this all works. But could you? Tell us about what, what does the show mean to you? The show means to me, it, it, when I started doing the show before Donnie got involved, it was just a love of the Beatles music. So for the first eight and a half years before I did a deal with Westwood One, it was I wasn't making any money on the show. It's just I just loved it and I would do it every week. And sometimes I could almost break even. Hey, I, I have a question for you. Okay. Did you have a Beatles haircut when you were a kid? No, because I was, when the Beatles played Ed Sullivan, I was like six. I, I may have had it by default, but I didn't have it on purpose. <laughs> Mom put because it on when your I head. was a certain age, my father would dictate how I would get my hair cut. 
just cut everything off and leave enough on the top to comb, you know, or whatever you would tell <laughs> so the barber. Looks like a boy. <laughs> so it just I had to get whatever haircut my father had okay. until I was old enough to tell my father I'm not going to get that haircut anymore. So, but I used to straighten my hair when I was like young, like twelve. I used to put like straightener yeah, in it so that yeah. it would fall straight, like a beetle haircut. Yeah, with a bang. Because I have wavy hair. But see, like I remember, I was that age during the Ed Sullivan Show too, and I remember watching these girls standing at the fence shrieking, "Mom, George, we're gonna!" I think we were kids, so we really didn't get it, you know. But then, as you get older, you get it. You get it. I love talking to you. I loved it. Well, we're having fun. It's all about fun. It's about the love of people here because they love the Beatles. They love each other. And, you know, life is too short to be mad at people, right? Don't you think? It's so great to see you Thank here at you. the Fab Four Festival, and you're all the way in from Los Angeles. Yep. All right. Yeah. And you're liking Nashville. Love Nashville. Yeah. Always love coming here. And you're getting some material for your documentary? Yes. I'm shooting a, a, a bit more here, but I'm on a panel today um, talking about um, my movie mm -hmm. called A Year in the Life, and um, again, as you know, um, it's just interviews I've done with about 110 people who all have a story about them and the Beatles. Mm -hmm. Whether they're famous people or not, whatever, and it's not just, oh, I saw Paul in an elevator one day. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It's real, substantive, fun stories. When, when do you do. think your, your show will be done? I mean, do you have a target date? So well, I would say it's about two or three weeks away from really being a completed well. movie, 90 minutes. And that's when I'll go on and try to, you know, see where we will find a home. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, cable? Is it selling a direct DVD? Is it in the movie theaters? I don't know. No, the point of the movie really is that there are people around the world that love the Beatles to all different extents. Um, and I'm kind of Joe Every Guy in this movie. You know, I just happen to take a camera and find these people at, that have these stories. And so I hope that my character in the movie. Um, uh, people can relate to that like wow I can't believe I'm in a room with this guy and he's right. telling me a story I, I just really had fun with it and yeah. I hope it's reflected yeah. in, the, in the piece it is it's great seeing you again thank you so much and enjoy your time in Nashville it's an honor to be on Fire Good Friday great. it really is we love having you thank you yeah John Tibben is here with me and we're going to talk to him a little bit about being a producer and, and being a songwriter in the community and uh, John welcome well, welcome thanks. to Fire Pit Friday and thanks for having me you are, well, first of all, you wor you've worked on a project that's out on stacks right now. Yeah, I, I, Can you I, talk about it? It's absolutely. Okay. I, I made a record. Um, we started it in my house about five years ago with Felix Cavalieri and C. Cropper, who are old friends of mine. And we just got together to see what we'd be able to come up with, and we started enjoying ourselves so much we couldn't stop, and eventually it turned into a CD that stacks saw fit to put out on the label it's called Nudge It Up a Notch and it's doing very well and people seem to be loving it. So. What is it like to produce Felix and Steve? Well, I mean, I co-produced it with them. They, you know, we were just partners in writing songs and and didn't feel like I was producing. We were just a bunch of guys having some fun, you know, seeing what we'd come up with and we, we start the songs with the two of them playing and singing and I'd be playing bass and drum machine just to make sure that there was a there was a bottom happening underneath what they did and eventually, you know, when we decided to make it a record, I said, you know, we got to get a professional bass player in. So we got Shake Anderson, we got uh, Chester Thompson playing drums. So we got, you know, the A team all the way around and those guys are just musical fountains. It's just, you know, it's very easy to just have fun, do what you do and, and it you listen back and you say, wow. What fun is it to be a musician, right? It's the best. It's I, the best. I got the greatest job. Well, there you heard it. You heard it here. John Tibbon, he's a fantastic guy, giving us his five minutes of his time. It's, it's so precious. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Oh, my goodness, Cynthia. We're here with Ed Solomon. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, CC. Hi. How are you, Ed? I'm doing great. I'm a little nervous because you're... Um, you're usually interviewing other people, right? right? And so I almost feel like you are the um, the master interviewer. Oh, master interviewer. So now we're, so we're now switching here it we go. Yes. Okay, so be kind. Uh, I, I, I promise not to give you an evaluation afterwards. <laughs> but you've interviewed quite a bit of people, and here at the Fab Four event, 
this is kind of your realm as far as yes the smile on his face your realm of people who have you, you have interviewed in the past can you kind of explain your history a little bit well um, I've been involved in radio most of most of my career started off in local radio and in 1981 I formed a partnership with Dick Clark and some other folks which was uh, the United Stations radio network eventually that evolved into uh, and was incorporated into the Westwood One radio network, which at the time was the biggest radio network in the country. As head of programming for all of these organizations along the way, I got to do all the best interviews. Yes, you did. <laughs> and so whenever someone needed to, was needed to interview Paul McCartney or Ringo Starr or Yoko Ono, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, as well as folks from the Rolling Stones and the Springsteen camps, et cetera, I, you know, I, I chose myself as the interviewer, so I uh, have a lot of great memories of those years. What do the Beatles mean to you, Ed? Well, when the Beatles started, I, I really wasn't a, a Beatles fan. I was uh, more of a rhythm and blues fan, mu music fan. And in fact, at the time that the Beatles records came out, I wasn't buying Beatles records. I'd be more likely buying records by obscure rhythm and blues vocal, vocal groups. But uh, um, they were just so all pervasive in our, in, our, in our culture that you couldn't help but get bit by the beetle bug, pun intended, and, and, and uh, you know, develop an appreciation for them. It's a lot of fun for me to interview artists because that's what I'm interested in. And to me, to be able to sit down for an hour or so with Paul McCartney and talk to him, and that's my job. I'm getting paid for that. It's just like incredible. It's I really great. appreciate you taking the time out to sit and talk. Thank you for being interested. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Bye. a great time at the Fab Festival. Fab we Forest. will. Thanks. So this time it's my turn to introduce the person because actually she and I go back a ways. We have a little bit of history. Can you see the excitement? <laughs> yeah. We're here with May Pang, and of course any Beatles fan knows May May. It's so it's my pleasure to meet you. Oh, thank you, Susan. Thank you for having me. I'm enjoying this. I I love being down here. It's been a while. How's Nashville treating you? Yeah, nice. It's great to, and let me tell you, to meet up with everybody again that I hadn't seen in a long time and did not know that you were down here I too. Know. My new book, uh, Instamatic Karma. That, did you get a chance to take a look at yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. It's all the photos from, from back then, you know, and when I took, uh, you know, there, there were a lot of good stuff. And in, in fact, a lot of people said, we've never seen these photos. I said, yeah, I've had them in my cupboard, you know, That's in the That's because they're, they're your portrait, your memories specifically of that yeah. time. So, of course, they're, you know, they're yeah, but a lot of people didn't realize I, I, I had them. They didn't know I took photos. Well, because you're a photographer. Yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it. And John kept saying, I like the way you see me. So I used to take photos of them all the time. Yeah. Being, a, being a photographer, you do look at things differently. You right. have an eye that is just different. It's true. I mean, when I saw John, I looked at him, and I, I see a, a, a person that I cared about at that time. And in fact, when this book came out, and I was doing my, um, a couple of months ago, and I was out in a radio station, these the DJs were saying, you know, I don't normally say this to you know, I'm a married guy, I'm a girl, I'm macho. But they, one, one guy said, you know, I look through photos and he goes, I see a John that I don't see in another photograph. He says that he's natural, he's relaxed, he's everything. He goes, I would say he's really handsome in here. And I don't, I didn't see that before. Mm, so it was quite that's interesting very to hear. very interesting. Right. You're an artist. I, we just kind of touched upon photography, which I would love to be able to send people to your book so right. that they can you know, find your book and see those beautiful photos. But you also make jewelry. Yes. Um, you know, I grew up with, you know, feng shui, which has become obviously the the buzzword. It's of the, the hip. hip. It's a hip thing. And it's, a, you know, you go to spas, you want to be zen, you want to... So I said, you know, it's kind of funny because I said, you know, I've grown up with feng shui all my life because that's part of my heritage. My mother said, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know, it doesn't go with right the, with the feng shui, you know, and I thought, okay, whatever that meant at that <laughs> time. So, you know, and then, you know, as you get older, you start to understand. And I, so I decided I was going to make some, I like to wear some jewelry that represented some, that, that uh, that living, that, you know, that felt mm -hmm. the flow of energy that would go through you. Mm -hmm. And I looked online, and I just kept looking, and I said, God, this 
nothing here that I would even want to wear. And it was so cheap looking. And I said, you know what? I may have to do this on my own. So I, I contacted my girlfriend, Leslie, and I said, we got to do something. She goes, what? I said, some feng shui jewels. She okay. <laughs> I said, I want something. I want the characters. We're talking about the characters. And I said, I want that. And I want it on, on something. On, and she goes, well, how about stainless steel? And I said, perfect. perfect. Because stainless steel doesn't tarnish. You could wear forever. And it looks like people think it's it's silver, you know, strong silver. And I said, no, it stands. And you could bash it around. And, but what she did was after, when it comes out, after it's cut, it's so thick. She has to sit down and she actually has to take it down. You know, wow. she, has to, she has to hand finish Working it all. It. And she came in and she goes, well, what do you think of this? I said, I don't like the grind. Because you could have the same piece, you know, but it's the way she hand finishes it off. That is different. So when you look at it, you see it. Yeah, you oh, see it. It's beautiful too, and they, and they have meaning. Yes. Uh, there's a round one that means uh, happiness. There's a, uh, a, a sort of a triangular one, which is harmony. And the corners are rounded because sharp edges is, doesn't work. You know, you need rounded edges so that it could just flow. And then we have one that's uh, almost like a triangle, and uh, not triangle, the um, uh, rectangle, and that's enlightenment. And then we have one that just goes around. I think most people know it's the infinity. You're such a very warm and very oh. endearing person. This has been a really big honor to have you here at the Fire Oh, well, thank you for having me. It's great to see you. <laughs> so they go to what? Maypang.com. Oh, and they can yeah. check out your jewelry and your book? Yes. There? Absolutely. Okay. Super. And the book is available in every um, store. You know, the Borders, okay. the, the uh, okay. what was it, Barnes & Noble. They're in all the bookstores. We are sitting here at the Fab Four event with a photographer, an awesome woman, a trendsetter, Nancy Lee Andrews is here. And she also happened to be um, somebody in Ringo Starr's life for quite a long time. Okay, so there's that is a little secret that's out right now, but we're going to get to know the woman behind all of this. And I'd like to start actually with your photographs, Nancy. Okay. Wow, what a photographer. Okay, I know that we see Ringo is here, but there's so much, in, so much in this book. Eric Clapton, Keith Moon, George Harrison, and Donovan on the cover. That's really funny. Did it start out as just a hobby for you? Yes. You, had, you, you, you filled time taking pictures and then exactly. you discovered you were good at it? Exactly. And so picking up the camera was something that was very natural to you? Very natural to me very natural to me and having modeled for several years, mm -hmm. I was always interested in the other side of the camera. And a great photographer, Milton Green, who did this famous shot of me in Life magazine, mm -hmm. he just said, here, take a camera and go out and shoot. See what you get. And I and he showed me how to load it and I went out and I used to come back and he'd say, you have an eye. You have an eye, Nancy. And he encouraged me. Yeah, this, is, this looks like a memory of yours. That's a memory of my first love, Carl Radel, who was with uh, Derek and the Dominoes, um, Leon Russell, and then he went and got Eric. When Eric came out of rehab, they started with 461 Oceanside Boulevard and went on from there. And then when he and I broke up, I went to L.A. because I didn't want to go back to New York. And when I got to L.A., um, I knew John Lennon, and May was there with him at that time. And um, I started hanging out with them. Is that okay? How you met? Not everybody can say that. Oh, I just hanging out with John. Hanging out with him. <laughs> so that's how you met Mr. Star. Yeah. John and May set me up. And how long did that? That's interesting. Mean, I last know. almost six years. Wow. In the seventies, you said right? Yes. So you were like. So this book is my homage to the seventies and all our friends and the musicians and music. It's a piece of Nancy who was like dancing through pop culture at the time. Well, how did how did Ringo feel about you as a photographer? Did he have? He was very encouraging. Okay. Because he's a great photographer. We had we came into that having that in common imagery. Mm -hmm. So you know there was always two cameras. Well, that's and, interesting. And you'll see we're a bunch of posers <laughs> with each other. I'm telling you. That it was is, great. It's just. 
as you get into the book, you'll see. Yeah. You know. The war, the war oh. of the photographers in here. Well, there's no, no, there's no war. It's just like, like, oh, that's really nice, darling. Don't move. You know. Is there a section of your life where you just say that? I don't remember that section of. My life. I do. Megan and I go through this all the time. We keep getting together and trying to, you know, be in the same place at the same time, and we each remember different things. And we, we constantly go, oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, I forgot about that. She's a beautiful person. Isn't she? Yes. And she has that. She is the photographer in her, too. Oh, yeah. She made a really interesting statement that she said that John Lennon liked the way she saw him. Yes. Mm. They were in love. I thought that that was really, really, I think that's like one of the most romantic things I've it ever is. heard. They were in love. And you can see that in her book, you know. And you can see that in this book with, with Ringo because they were comfortable and they knew that we loved them mm -hmm. you know so so it was okay for them to be them they were them not the beetle Ringo oh, but no, 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 no. where Ooh. can people buy this book you can buy this book you can go online um, uh, Amazon has it okay you can go to my publisher www.daltonwatson.com all right free shipping and as of the beginning of December, it'll be in Barnes and Noble. Excellent. Borders. Um, I'm doing a sign. Is this from Nashville? This is Nashville. This is Nashville. This is Nashville. Well, December eighth, I'm doing a signing at Davis Kid in Green Hills. Perfect. 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 Now, if someone wants to get to you as a photographer, you have your own website, NancyLeandres.com. Okay, May Pang, Seth Sorsky, uh, it's on. Nancy. I mean, the Joe, I mean, uh, let's Gary. See, Gary. Do we leave anybody else? Ed, Ed Solomon. You know what, everybody, thank you so much for giving us a piece of your memoirs. And uh, now we're going to go enjoy the party because that's what the bathroom is all about. The party! And we get to eat. No, the party! Well, we're all about the eating. <laughs> okay, I agree.